Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I'd like to talk to you about pencil lines. Of course, most of us use pencil to draw out our scene before painting it. But how reliant are we upon those lines to define objects, particularly when the painting has been completed? By that, what I really mean is, if we rub the pencil lines out, will things disappear? Well, here's a short demonstration which I hope will illustrate the point and offer some advice on how to avoid the main pitfalls. For this demonstration, I needed a suitable subject. A house with a chimney stack, I decided. Struggling to find exactly what I wanted and almost resorting to the internet, I looked out of my studio window and realised my neighbour's house fitted the bill exactly. Using a pencil to draw out a scene in preparation for painting isn't unusual. In fact, I'd take a punt and say that it's probably the most common method of laying out a watercolour. So what's my point? What is it that I'm trying to say? Let's paint this in and take a look at the result. Disregarding the fact that this is very much a simplified version of my neighbour's house, with a few minor design changes that he probably wouldn't approve of, let's just stop and take a closer look at the scene. I've kept the sky and background light, and I've also kept the chimney stack light, which means that the only thing currently defining the chimney stack are the pencil lines. To demonstrate the significance of this, let's see how it looks if I remove the pencil lines. The result is significantly weaker. Not only has my chimney stack effectively disappeared, but the corner of the house has gone AWOL too. The furthest edge of the house is also less clearly defined than it was. 
So the point that I'm trying to make is that in its current state, the painting needs the pencil lines to help differentiate between the objects within it. In pure watercolour terms, I regard this as an unsatisfactory situation and a problem that needs solving. Not just by leaving the pencil lines in, but by making adjustments to the watercolour. Let's put the pencil lines back in and look at how the painting can be fixed. If the background is to remain light, then the chimney stack needs to be made darker. It's as simple as that. In watercolour, contrasting tones are essential to create a good, strong composition. Colours are important too, of course, but nothing threatens to undermine and weaken the composition quite like clashing tones. Adding a slightly darker tone to the facing wall helps to exaggerate and reinforce the corner. The end wall of the house is a different matter. I want it to remain light, so to create maximum definition I need to darken the background accordingly. In watercolour, tone is relative. In other words, the darker I make the background, the lighter the wall of the building will appear. More importantly, the more I tweak and engineer the tones in the watercolour, the less need there is for the pencil lines. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that pencil lines are in any way a bad thing. In many cases, they can be integral to a successful watercolour painting style. Here I've used a very simplistic and genetically modified example to make a point. But the message remains true. Don't fall into the trap of relying too heavily on pencil lines to explain your composition. Always ask yourself the question, if I rub my pencil lines out, will things disappear? Make the watercolour do the lion's share of the work. I wonder if my neighbour would like a painting of his house. Well, I hope you found that helpful. The question of whether to leave pencil lines in or take them out is down to personal preference. In pure watercolour, however, it is important not to be too dependent upon them. Until next time, take care.